Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion here at St Mary Magdalene with St Martin in Croydon, East Croydon. You're very welcome if you are joining us online on the live stream and if you're joining us later on in the week following this recording. It's by God's love in his Holy Spirit that we are united in worship. And let's take this opportunity to wish Happy New Year to one another, because last Sunday it was still 2023. So shall we just say Happy New Year to one another? Happy New Year. <laughs> and Happy New Year to all of you who are watching from home. So grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's stand and sing our opening hymn while shepherds watched their flocks by night. you like to be seated as we come before our loving Heavenly Father to pray and to bring our confession to him. Let's pray this prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. 
There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Therefore, let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we sing the Gloria together? Do stand if you are able. <clears throat> We pray this first collect for this year, a collect for Epiphany, together. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you like to be seated as Chris brings our readings? Thank you. Good morning. The uh, first reading is from Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. So, uh, yes, 1 to 7. Paul in Ephesus. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we've not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptised? And they answered, into John's baptism. And Paul said, well, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied, 
All altogether, there were about 12 of them. So here ends the first reading. If you are able, would you please stand for the reading of the Gospel? The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The baptism of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Oops, sorry. I think I'm probably going to be on this microphone, but I must reattach for later. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this new day and for this beautiful day as well with the sun streaming in through these windows. We ask you, Father, to stream your love, your light into our hearts as we consider your word and listen to your Holy Spirit. Amen. Wasn't yesterday just lovely? I don't hope many of you were able to be at the musical performance of Stargazers yesterday afternoon, followed by a magnificent tea. And a big thank you, especially to Hilary and Bridge, who enabled that to happen, but to all of you who enabled that to happen, our singers and musicians and those who were able to set up the platform and our um, refreshments as well. We came together as a church family for the first Saturday in the new year, bringing, which I found very moving for many members of your own families and friends, in my case, members of my household. And uh, it was wonderful to be able to extend that love beyond our geographical boundaries and include those who live further away. God's word is precious, very precious indeed. And I felt for these opening words of 2024, we can do nothing other than to take God's word himself spoken at the baptism of Jesus as our word for this coming year. This is my beloved son. With him, I am well pleased. I'm just going to remind us, before we move on into that, of the context for today. It's Epiphany, the first Sunday in Epiphany. Christmas finished uh, on Friday, Saturday, (coughs) Friday in particular, And then Epiphany begins, and Epiphany simply means the revelation of Jesus, and we tend to use the story of the wise men uh, as the the point of contact in Jesus' historical life as to looking at how he was revealed to the world. But we've just sung a carol to remind us that revelation began right at his birth. Uh, when the shepherds had that extraordinary experience from the angels who let loose, there were no secrets after the angels were singing in heaven as to who had just been born and where they'd been born and the fulfillment of prophecy and the hope of the Messiah being amongst us. But when it came to approximately two years later, there was an arrival of um, wise magi, wise men. We assume they were men. We don't know how many, but they brought three gifts. I'm just going to remind us of it because I'm going to refer to it uh, in this talk this morning. I can get the page right. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, so it doesn't give you a specific time, but we know it was later, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, 
Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we've come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. It wasn't just Herod, it was all of Jerusalem. And calling together all the chief priests, you have to remember that Herod was Jewish, so he called together the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. No question in his mind that the prophets would have been speaking the truth. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, For from you shall come a ruler who is to be a shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was, child, not baby, and not the stable, but a home. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Magi worshipped Jesus, bowing down at his feet and giving him gifts. They came to his home. That was how they first encountered Jesus, at home with him. They were outsiders, they'd come from the Far East, you know all this, they were not Jewish, they were Gentiles. The shepherds at least uh, were Jewish, but the lowest of the low. And they also encountered Jesus at home, but it was sort of more their home, uh, the place where the animals were kept. Jesus came to them and met them uh, in the home they might have been used to. The wise men came to worship Jesus and met him at his home. And we see in this story the unconditional love, God's entire love given unconditionally in Jesus. And we also see the entire love of the shepherds and the outsiders, the magi, given in its entirety, in the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh. And Jesus gives to them and to us his entire love, unconditional love. The love that God has for us that is based on a covenant he made in the Old Testament times. I will be your people, I will be your God, and you will be my people. And we would say, we will be your people, and you will be our God. And there are a range of attributes that characterize this unconditional love of giving and of inviting us home. And in these quite tough times for many of us and tough times for this world, it's good to remember the one love that never fails, this unconditional love of God. I'm just going to speak briefly about four aspects of God's unconditional love. Firstly, it is sacrificial and unrestricted. This is his love to us, giving to the point of death on a cross. For God, as we've just heard in the confession, so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It is unrestricted. Shepherds and Gentile wise men are included in Jesus' home and in his self-giving to them. The wise men came from afar and were made welcome in his home. And he went, so to speak, to the home of the shepherds, a stable to be born. His love is sacrificial and unrestricted. All are welcome. Secondly, it is unfailing. It is everlasting. It is forever and ever. It never runs out. It never runs short when we've had a bad day. God's love never gets blocked. Jeremiah has the words of God to us way back. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness, everlasting love. And there are many times, if you're like me, 
where we say, why did that have to happen? Where are you? What is going on? And we remember how Jesus cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet he knew God was with him. God's love is with us in those very dark times. It is everlasting. It is unfailing. And thirdly, God's love stays with us every single hour of the day. It is steadfast. Nothing can prevail against it. We can't run away from his love. We cannot hide from him, from the life that he gives us. Romans tells us this, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? However terrible your circumstances, God is not separated from you. He goes on to say, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We notice in the account of the Magi coming that Herod was going to be determined. We didn't, actually, I didn't read that bit, but it goes on a little bit further. He's going to be determined to get rid of this king because he's frightened and he's stirred up this fear in Jerusalem of this coming king, this baby king. And so he decides, as you know, to kill all baby boys under the age of two. We think about Moses and how that happened to him. But Herod's acts did not stamp out Jesus, did not stamp out God's love being given to us. His love cannot be prevailed against. And lastly, unconditional love goes beyond what we imagine, but we need the Holy Spirit's power in order to be able to um, uh, comprehend it, to attain it, to enter into that love. Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love, have power to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's, that statement is just so extraordinary. We need the Holy Spirit's power. We just prayed for that in our um, collect this morning. We prayed this, eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children, that we, by the power of the Spirit, may live our lives as adopted children, and children are loved by the Father, that unconditional love. We ask for God's Holy Spirit in this new year to grasp the never-ending love. And all we have to do is open our hearts to him. We don't have to earn anything. We don't have to feel judged. We just simply have to open our hearts to him. Now, Jesus was called the Beloved in that wonderful reading of the baptism of Jesus, which is always given at Epiphany because 30 years later, when Jesus began his ministry amongst us as an adult, he began it with that baptism, and we've preached on that many times, and we will again in the future. But the point I want to bring out here is not so much that Jesus came to be baptized and all was revealed, but what God said, my beloved. Jesus called, is called the beloved son. He is completely, thoroughly, and fully loved. The beloved son was the chosen king who pleased God. In the Old Testament, the most beloved son or king who pleased God was David. And in fact, there's the only other person who's called beloved by God. And one of the phrases, if I can just find it here, I've got it in a note at the end, I think, which is really interesting for me, um, that, where is it gone? Here we are. 
uh, I found really fascinating. One of the ways in which we use the word beloved in Hebrew is uh, to pronounce it in this way. We say, ani, lododi, vedodi, li, which means I am, I belong to my beloved. My beloved is mine. And dodi is the word for beloved. And if you know um, a little bit of Swahili or Arabic, etc., you might recognize dodi as a name. Um, in other languages, it might sound as Dawood, and it actually is the name of David. So King David was given that name, which is translated as beloved. And so we know that right from um, God's purposes throughout history, he is wanting his people to know what it means to be beloved, what beloved looks like. Very interesting word. There's no... Um, uh, there are other words that begin with the letter B-E in our English translation, and I thought it might be quite interesting just to look at some of them to see how we should understand beloved. If you take the word beget, not baguette, but beget, to beget, we don't use it very often. You've got the B-E and the G-E-T, beget, and it means to fully deliver. When you look at the word below, B-E-L-O-W, it means completely underneath. There's no doubt about it. If you're below, you are completely underneath. I didn't know this. The word betray, B-E-T-R-A-Y. Betray means thoroughly to thoroughly hand over. Now, we think of it as a negative term, but to betray meant to thoroughly hand something over. Uh, what we know in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus that he was betrayed, thoroughly handed over by Judas to the, uh, the temple guard. The word beyond, completely over there, yonder, going yonder, beyond, completely over there. And to be betrothed, the trothed part of that word uh, is, comes from the word truth. So to be completely in the truth, when you are engaged to be married, you are thoroughly and truthfully promised to, you, have, you have thoroughly and truthfully promised to marry someone. Um, to become, to become, to thoroughly arrive, to become, to thoroughly arrive, to thoroughly be what you have arrived as. And be friend, to be friend, to thoroughly and fully make a friend. So to be loved. We can see easily now how we have translated those words in Hebrew of Dodi and also another word, achav, which means to love, into the English word beloved, to thoroughly and completely love. There's no gap. Jesus is called the beloved son. It means that he is completely, thoroughly and fully loved by God. And that pleases him. You've heard this preached before that Jesus had done nothing in his ministry at this point. And God said, I am pleased. I am really pleased. Not worried about what is going to happen or what he's going to do. His full concern is that he loves his son. The psalm, Psalm 27, tells us a little bit about um, David and, and David's... Uh, knowledge of God's love for him. But for you and I, for today, this first Sunday in Epiphany and first Sunday in the new year, let us think of God as our Father. Let us consider him as our Father. Let us ask him to send in his Holy Spirit that we may breathe in that family likeness of Jesus into our lives that we may know his love, unconditional through all things, that we are beloved, we are one of his children. Jesus is our brother, our friend, as well as our master and our king, that we are one with God because he has chosen to love us. There's a lovely, um, it's a Hebrew, and, and a rabbi's statement about being loved or beloved. Another word I mentioned earlier used in Hebrew for love is achuv, and the root means to, to love completely. And uh, a rabbi called Avot de Rabbi Natan said this, three things make a person beloved by others, 
an open hand, a set table, and a sparkling wit. And I like to think that translates into how Jesus has been with us. He has opened his hands to us. He has invited us into his own, and he makes our hearts sing. Amen. Shall we stand together to affirm our faith in the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you like to be seated as we come to our prayers and intercessions? Father, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new year. And we thank you for the joy that we have in the knowledge of your love, in the receiving of your love into our hearts. And we pray for this world where love is fractured, where bitterness and hatred rule. We bring before you the uh, needs of people worldwide as a result of flooding or famine, of earthquake, of tsunami, of fire, of drought. Lord, we pray for your mercy. Pray for those in Japan uh, to recover from the impact of this earthquake. We pray for those who are suffering as a result of war and for, and for the, um, the reasons behind war, Lord, to be set right by your peace. We pray for the people of Ukraine and of Russia. And it's two years, Lord, we pray that you would give your wisdom and your strength, that your love, in your, the power of your love, would rule in the hearts of those perpetrating this war. We pray for the people of Israel and of Gaza. We pray, Father, for the eradication of evil, and we pray, Lord, for peace. You call us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for that peace, Lord, that you would come and reveal yourself to the hearts of men and women in Gaza and in Israel, that they may know the peace of Jesus in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for our, the freedoms we have in this country, Father. We pray for our government to know the weight of responsibility and of your direction in order to enable that freedom to be enjoyed by all people who live here. Freedom from poverty, freedom from abuse, freedom from homelessness, freedom from unemployment. We ask, Father, for good structures to be emboldened, to be enhanced, to care for the needy, to care for the sick, to care for those who struggle. We thank you for our schools, for our education system, and we pray, Father, for the right um, finance to enable that system to work well. We pray, Father, for all those young people and children who've gone back to school this week and are going back in this week ahead. 
We pray that you would encourage their hearts as they learn and study and guide them into their future. We pray for our King, for King Charles, and for the royal family, Lord, as they uh, uh, work amongst charities and people groups in this nation to acknowledge the goodness that is being done by ordinary people. We pray, Father, that you would increase in us the desire to love our neighbour and to reach out to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for uh, our diocese, for Southwark Diocese, and for our parish here at St Mary Magdalene with St Martin. We thank you, Father, for Bishop Christopher and Bishop Rosemary. We pray for them as they lead the diocese into the coming year for your inspiration and revelation and wisdom. And Lord, as we approach our own special day together in order to listen to you and to work on the uh, vision pointers that our PCC have already worked on, we ask you, Father, to clarify for us the focus you want us to have in this coming year and in the years ahead. May that day be, as yesterday was, a day of the family coming together to share, to encourage, and to build up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are sick and who are mourning at this time. We remember especially Denise Philby and thank you for the life of her father, Ernest. We pray for her and for her family and her brother to know your peace and comfort. And in the quietness and stillness of this moment, we pray for those we know who need God's healing, restoration. We thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. So accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand together to share the peace with one another? When Jesus came and stood amongst his disciples, he said to them, Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We share a sign of that peace with one another now. As we prepare ourselves to receive bread and wine together in communion, we also receive our offerings now and we sing the hymn, What Child Is This?
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all. Lord of all creation, in your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread. He gave you thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church, Throughout the world, we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Shall we sit to pray and to pray as our Saviour taught us? We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let's pray a prayer of thanksgiving together. We pray, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So we have coffee and tea, and I'm sure a few leftovers from yesterday's tea over in the Mandolin Centre, right at the finish of our worship in here together. Uh, and then again, just want to say, in case you missed it earlier, a big thank you to all those involved in the vision for and the execution of the lovely afternoon we had yesterday together with the Stargazers presentation, the um, musical that we enjoyed together. Thank you very much for... Um, all those, to the, all those who worked so hard to make that happen. Next Sunday, second Sunday in the month, it's Messy Church, which begins in the church hall and comes into here and then goes back again for some food, starting at four o'clock next Sunday. So do invite people to come to that and do come along yourself just to enjoy and see what God is doing amongst us. Can I just reiterate, because actually it hasn't been on the notice sheet, I hadn't realised for a while. We do meet on Saturday mornings for prayer between 9.15 and 10 a.m. Maybe this new year you might like to consider coming. You might like to consider coming once a month or every week. <laughs> but please do consider coming to pray for our work here in the parish and for people in our church family who are in need. I gather the family, church family directory is being updated, the family list, so um, it's been in the notice sheet for a while, so can I just urge anybody who knows their details are in that, and if they need updating, to let Jennifer in the office know. Um, church family day will be beginning at 9.45 on Saturday the 27th. There should be a sign-up sheet somewhere. Does anybody seen it? I think it might be on the desk at the front. Um, is, on, is it on the desk, the welcome desk? Yeah. Okay, so could you just sign up so that we know how many to cater for for lunch that day? We aim to, um, I think we'll finish earlier, but three o'clock is like the official time by which we will have finished. Um, and a program will be issued for you next Sunday so you can see what is happening. So do sign up so we can know. And if you are gluten-free, dairy-free, just put that against your name so we can be aware of what kind of sandwiches or lunch to order for um, all of us to share together. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn. Brightest and best, a really good epiphany hymn. Brightest and best are the sons of the morning.
as we come to the close of our service, you will notice by every Christmas tree there is a plastic bag. And I was about to move them, thinking they looked untidy, but they serve a very good purpose. They are for each of us, perhaps we could do it in pairs and get to know somebody new, to de-decorate a Christmas tree. And then the second service people can have the great privilege of untreeing the tree, <laughs> putting them in a box. So there's a bag per tree. It's a really good idea because it means next year we've got a bag for each tree. Very, very good thinking, Chris. It only took 13 years to get there. <laughs> But if you could, with somebody else, maybe in a three or a four, undecorated tree, that would be marvellous before we have a coffee, or with your coffee. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.